morning, everyone. Um, my work, as Paul said, looks at monitoring micro VNFs. Hopefully, you can all hear me. I can't actually tell, but um, yeah. So the two projects that are currently in this are Unimon and Uniprobe. You might have seen Unimon be presented um, earlier in MGCDI, and that's kind of coming to an end. And Uniprobe is the kind of secondary project in the same pipeline. And as you can probably guess in the naming theme, they are both unikernel focused. So both look at monitoring unikernel based micro VNFs. So kind of to start off, in case you didn't see that uni first Unimon presentation, I will cover like, what unikernel VNFs are and why we actually want them in modern network infrastructure. And kind of following on from that, I'll cover the two separate projects, which both look at kind of how to tackle a different set of issues that occur when we introduce unikernels into um, network infrastructure. And if we get a chance at the end, I'll go through like a vision of how these two projects kind of like merge into well, kind of one more overall architecture for NGCDI. Yeah, so to get started, um, some of you might be familiar with containerization, like stuff like Docker, where you take an application and you bundle it with its required software libraries and potentially for deployment, its configuration as well. And you kind of bundle these into a tar file and you call it a container image. And what unikernels are is effectively the same sort of thing, but rather you also bundle in a minimal operating system. So it can actually operate directly on um, sometimes hardware and most commonly a directly on top of a hypervisor like Xen or KVM. So it produces a binary image instead, which means you don't actually need anything like a, a Ubuntu-based OS running a Docker engine to be able to instantiate one. And like I mentioned Docker a couple of times there for containers, and there's a similar application kind of framework, um, Unicraft, which is hoping to try and do a, very, a, a vaguely similar thing for unikernels, as you're making the process easier for developers which actually Alexander Young, who's on this call, probably be the best point of contact if you want to know more about Unicraft. And much like um, containers, the performance benefits and kind of operational benefits all come from how we instantiate them, which is a lot of horizontal scaling. So a lot of individual units all instantiated are on the same physical host. So unicorns are very, very small. So we can actually have thousands potentially instantiated on a single host. And because they're running on top of a hypervisor directly, you're getting strong, well-defined isolation between each unit without having to have a kind of a separate VM per tenant running a container engine. And it all gets to be a very messy, very layered architect when you deploy containers like this. But unikernels kind of strip away a lot of those unnecessary layers and just run it directly on a hypervisor, giving you kind of the security that you'd be familiar with, but without any of the drawbacks of having um, bloated operating systems around. But what the actual benefits of doing, like adding these unikernels into our architecture. And I would argue the, the most important benefit is the image size we get from these. So an operating system like Ubuntu Core 18, if you were to download it today, um, it'll probably be about 312 megabytes, just over that. And a lot of VNS are deployed operating systems like that, which are, they are still considered minimal operating systems. It still doesn't contain a lot of the packages you would find in a traditional Ubuntu server installation, but it's still very large especially when you compare it to like a, a ClickOS image, which is a, a unikernel-based micro VNF, which it often ranges from 1.7 megabytes to 2 megabytes in image size, which in a data center environment is kind of, it's a nice saving to have. But more specifically, when you have edge nodes and you want to deploy new micro VNFs to those frequently, that image size reduction can be very significant in how you actually <laughs> treat those edge nodes. And because of these small image sizes as well, when you instantiate them, which they instantiate in a matter of microseconds in some circumstances, um, they actually don't take up much in the way of system resources either, which is what enables them to have this mass scaling with thousands per physical host, like I mentioned before. And again, continuing this trend of minimalism, it removes a lot of overhead you would find in bloated operating systems like, like Ubuntu Core, where as it's only running a single application, we only care about that VNF application really. But you don't need the context switch between loads of processes on the system. So we can get rid of that whole whole system altogether. We don't need context switching. And that gives us a, a nice little performance bonus as well. And as with most things, the, the fact that we're removing lots of features from traditional operating systems means there's less to go wrong, both in terms of just maintenance and security. So you get a lot of benefits um, in that area as well. So kind of, yeah, if that should cover unikernels. If you've got any more points on those, obviously get them through later. But the first project is Unimon, which is the one which is kind of coming to a more of a close at this point. But so this looks at unikernel monitoring, hence the name. And this looks at a very specific problem of unikernels, a, a more system level problem. Because 
in network infrastructure, management has typical expectations of what it would define as a VM. So it defines a VM would typically have something like SSH or a separate application exporting data to Prometheus or a web server with a, a point of contact as an API for the management infrastructure. But VMs have these, unikernel based VMs typically don't. So it becomes a bit more unexpected and a bit more of this black box as far as the management is concerned. So we still need to get this micro VNF data out. We need to get all the monitoring data out of the micro VNF, otherwise we can't scale it. And as I mentioned before, with the thousands of instances per physical host, scaling is effectively more important than ever. So when you don't have a system to collect this data, um, you end up with a few problems. Like containers have found ways around this problem. Like they use programs like C Advisor from Google, which uses the Docker socket to collect more information. But trying to monitor in the same way with unikernels, you're left with basically tools that monitor data from the hypervisor. So this leaves you with hardware metrics such as CPU utilization, memory utilization, potentially raw packet throughput in bytes, all of which are useful data points, but don't necessarily provide a good picture of the actual state of that VNF. So it's still a black box, really, even with that data. So Unimon is an, actually an approach at monitoring these micro VNFs, which aims at actually implementing the monitoring for these directly into the VNF application itself, rather than relying on something like a Prometheus exporter sitting alongside as a separate process we have to implement that directly into the VNF itself. So as you, obviously this is a very developer focused method because a developer would be left with the burden of implementing this. But nonetheless, the reason why Unimon does this is it also has a stipulation of an API, which allows for configuration after compile time. So day one beyond where operators can also adjust what metrics are collected and rates are collected at, et cetera. I'll get more on that later. But so the kind of core fa fact of this is that it still remains agnostic to the method of communication. As I mentioned before, we don't have features like SSH or potentially don't have a web server, but packets can still be used to export data. We can use, um, in some cases, stuff like the Zen store, Zen sockets. There's still ways to get data out of the system. It's just that they're going to vary between what unikernel VNF you're using and what platform it's running on. So the, the, one of the other benefits of this is the fact that developers can target very specific metrics inside the VNF. So rather than having to monitor the VNF as a whole. You can target very specific components of a VNF. And obviously, as with anything, putting it into the system is going to have an impact on its performance. So <laughs> we goes about saying really that the objective is to have a, a very minimal impact on that system. So this is an example of like a, a unikernel based VNF um, click offs. This is an example of a click configuration you might have in that for a, a ludicrously dumb IPsec router where one of the core features is actually um, this polling ingress we might have. And this polling ingress where that, like, could use something like NetMap, which is a zero copy packet IO framework, would either show 100% CPU utilization of this VNF at any given time as it's polling or 0% as it's blocking. And that shows a really poor picture of what's actually going on inside the VNF. It's either under full load or no load whatsoever as far as hardware metrics are concerned. So as from just cutting data from the hypervisor, we would have no clue how to effectively scale this. So the objective of Unimon is the developer would isolate components they would feel are most likely to cause CPU bottlenecks in this circumstance. So they might go, this polling ingress and the encryption part of this IPsec router are going to be the heavy hitters. So, and, and once isolating these, they could effectively target and expose data from these. For example, the polling ingress could expose how many CPU cycles it's used. And then the, what the operator could do is modify this configuration using that data that the um, developer is now exposing from the specific parts of the VNF pipeline. They could potentially go, we want to get these CPU cycles every n microseconds and export them to a communication mechanism which is available to both the management infrastructure and the VNF, which in this case could be the Zen store, which is often found in most para virtualized Zen guests. And the way this would be actually configured by the um, operator isn't overly important to the Unimon architecture. It's kind of essential that the API be there, but not necessarily how it's implemented. So the, the implementation that currently exists for this is built on ClickOS, as mentioned before. And this, you, this is element abstraction. So each element is a packet operation. And one of these um, elements is now handler poll, which basically extracts a certain bit of data from a given element at a given rate and exports to Zen store. So some of the configuration options have added here, which are more operator focused and developer focused, 
for example, the ability to pick whether it's a timed um, event or whether it's based on n packets. So however many packets go through the system poll or however many microseconds poll. And obviously the main one here is the rate as well, where we can stipulate how frequently that happens. But the core thing is that the um, exporter be available to both the sender and receiver. So that is very unikernel specific. So in this ClickOS implementation, it's not necessarily very generic. But the idea is, is that no matter what, the monitoring is treated in a very similar way to packet operations are treated. So yeah, the, this is um, a, a diagram of how you might export that data. This is in, in the, um, the Zen sense again with ClickOS. So some of the ways might be you might use Zen Store because this is more typically available. Like you're going to find this on pretty much most Zen hosts. So most Zen guests should feel free to use it. And this method, although more ubiquitous, still comes with a lot of drawbacks in the sense that it, it's quite costly in the form of hypercalls. But you can, as one of these many configuration options, use something like Zen Sockets, which defines a shared memory region, which is far less resource intensive. It's effectively zero copy for generic data, but it isn't necessarily ubiquitous on the host. So again, it comes down to what the operator needs, but the configuration should be there. So yeah, quickly going over to an evaluation on this because I'm realizing I've been babbling a bit and I'm going over time. But um, so the logic is of pure functionality. Like we have a state of, on ClickOS where we can we can get that data. We can kind of pipe packets into a ClickOS based VNF, and we can export that data from the VNF as well and collect how many CPU cycles something like that polling ingress is using in a in a dumb IPsec router. So and then kind of moving over to a bit more performance. This happens to be like the, the couple of weeks I'm actually collecting the data. So a lot of, none, none of this data is final in any sense. There's still a few tweaks to the setup that need to happen. But at the moment, about polling for CPU cycles at 100 microseconds seems to have about an 8.5 to 9% performance impact on the overall system as compared to not polling for that metric whatsoever. But then if you poll every one second, you can barely see an actual performance impact. So it, it very much depends on what you want to operate. And there's clever ways you can implement this in an actual network, such as more sampled networking. Now, if, if you're having thousands of micro VNFs that are all unikernel based, you don't need to monitor them all in the same detailed way. But as I mentioned, very preliminary results, and there should be some nicer results coming somewhat soon. Yeah, so switching on to the next project, which is Uniprobe. Um, this takes a look at a very different side of the problems with unikernels. So Unimon looked at the more systems approach and the fact we're not extracting the data, whereas Uniprobe takes a different glance where it looks at it from a management perspective. So mentioning that thousands of micro VNFs is really great when you're thinking how scalable that is, but that's just, all it is to the management layer is just more work, more burden. And management layers are often very centralized. Like if you look at OSM, like open source Mano, it's effectively a, a central point where all this data has to go to. You can distribute it partially, but there's still going to be limitations to that level of distribution. So when, as you generate more contextual data, which is great for scaling, and you've got thousands of VNFs doing that, you're all pushing this to a central management layer, which is burdening that to make decisions and do policy enforcement, but is also just kind of decreasing the available bandwidth to other, other functionality in the data center, which becomes, as you have more instances, a bigger and bigger problem. And as we can't particularly scale this management infrastructure to the demand. And in some circumstances now, we're having one management center for multiple data centers, which means we're having to communicate this contextual monitoring data for thousands of VNFs across wide area networks. So it's going to only going to become more of a problem. So the question is, is it time to decentralize this management infrastructure? And that would be a very, very grand idea to completely decentralize that. And this does not propose that in any way. But it proposes adding some decentralized component, adding a small abstraction layer between central Mano and the VNFs themselves. So Uniprobe specifically um, as the idea of these micro monitors, which are unikernel VNFs in effect, but all they do is in-network monitoring. We don't actually provide any kind of services to the packets in the network. But this allows you to extract very specific bits of information from very specific parts of the network. So rather than having to deploy, the entire net, uh, deploy services for an entire network to monitor an entire network, you can focus on very specific bits of the network, which come down very nicely when you look at integrating this with an intent framework when you want to verify if an intent is either possible or has been implemented successfully you, you want to you don't have to monitor the entire network to do that and these vnf units which are going to be performing monitoring can be created by developers of service function chains and configured again by operators much like in the way unimon was so you can actually collect both operator focused data and developer focused data 
which is a really important thing for the kind of, I guess, net DevOps if you're into that sort of terminology. So that's moving on. Yeah. So what's what's actually gained from this? We get highly detailed information from very specific parts of the network without having to deploy this kind of monitoring network wide. But the kind of core fact is that not all of these monitoring nodes have to actually monitor. Some of them can be recipients for data from other monitoring nodes. So it can be a, a kind of mildly holonic architecture where we can either perform local policy enforcement on very at very local points in the network. Or in some cases, if we can't do that, we can simply do aggregation, which still relieves burden on the um, the bandwidth problem I, I mentioned earlier. And finally, as I said, I think I said again, um, the fact that if we want to verify intents have been either deployed successfully or can be deployed successfully, this is something um, this kind of architecture would be able to do quite efficiently. So in a, quite a, a minimal example here, this is like a service function chain where we have a firewall, which in this case is a unikernel based software function a load balancer and a n cache nodes, which are both hardware functions. If you wanted to apply some some nice of this as a mildly holonic um, architecture over to uh, over to this example, we could look at something like this, where we could in, uh, install Unimon in the firewall, you know, you know, into project stuff. It's quite nice. And that would give us some good data there, which we can feed back to Uniprobe Manager. And we can potentially get something like the bandwidth between the load balancer and some of these cache cache units and in some circumstances like this HTTP get here we could attempt to use the service and try and get a better understanding of the, the whole service function chain and its current performance or just force these tests to actually be carried out and these could actually be sent back rather than going all the way back to the orchestrator directly these could be sent to the Uniprobe manager which if you look at the diagram as it is now that doesn't seem like a great benefit but if you look at it as though this orchestrator has not just instantiated one of these service function chains it's instantiated hundreds of these service function chains Sending all of that data back to the, the orchestrator might be a bit much for it to, to handle, especially considering it's got other service function chains to think about as well. So this Uniprobe manager could either perform aggregation, or if you want to be fancy about it and do some net DevOps, um, you could look at some how you want to verify certain features that have been implemented successfully, or if certain features aren't performing as expected. And this could potentially take the form of some actions that are carried out, such as rolling back updates, or if it's if it is doing very well, then rolling out updates even further. I'm going to go in more details into net DevOps stuff. And this could look like a developer workflow for this type of thing, where we could have this code, the, our configuration that a developer could change locally, like they would now. But they would also apply a Uniprobe configuration file to the, to the same repository that code's being written in, which would define factors like what monitoring VNFs they actually want to be deployed with their service and what the expected values and metrics would be for those services if they were performing as expected. Or you could change those in the future as well to target higher performance um, gains. And you push that to remote infrastructure, nothing new there. And, and again, nothing much new with this step either, where we could look at um, just using CI CD to build that VNF on the server. And if the build fails, roll back to the developer. That's kind of CI CD as it is today. Then adding in some extra steps, we could then deploy that to an emulated environment such as Mininet where we could use software functions created by the developer and potentially digital twins of the hardware functions that would be um, deployed within a physical network and then using that Uniprobe configuration file that the developer configured we could then determine if those parameters are met or not met and if they're not met we could just basically send it back to the developer and give them some data about actually what went wrong rather than just saying it went wrong or it didn't perform as expected. So they, this doesn't actually need much of the operator to de do anything here. So it's all just for the developer, that part. And then adding in some some stuff for the operators here, this could have to be automatically then staggered out for, throughout the production network as well. So it could update some proportion of the VNFs being updated and perform the same monitoring on them to different degrees. It doesn't obviously have to monitor all of them. You could do the sampled monitoring, as I mentioned earlier as well. Yeah, if those kind of metrics aren't met or if the if it's underperforming based on the configuration file, you could then roll back that update. Or if it is performing well, you could roll out that update further until the entire um, service of, of end services of those um, defined systems are updated. So with Unimon and Unipro both coming together, this makes a whole new way of both deploying and managing virtual network functions based on unikernels from especially as a big change from what we've got now managing full fat VNFs such as Ubuntu. So this doesn't just come into consideration how we monitor these VNFs, but from the starting point where developers create the VNFs 
to deploying the VNFs and then continual updates, maintenance, and scaling. So as I mentioned before with Net DevOps, this brings it all together and does require a, a ton of cooperation between operators and developers. But all in all, the benefits we gain from this come both in the way of performance and in the way of stability. So with, with larger rollout times on bigger VNFs and having to manage dependencies for an entire operating system, these unicorn VNFs coming pre-packaged gives us so many benefits, which are so costly to manage if we don't have proper automation in that workflow. So developers creating uniprobe-like monitors to monitor their network and give them the data they need, they can better work on these from their side of things, pushing newer updates quicker and making sure that updates they do provide have more stability in the network before a full rollout. And from the operator's perspective, these developers are now also adding in where to best monitor for these performance statistics that are crucial for the scaling and being able to deliver this performance with minimal resource overhead. So this is what we haven't been able to see really before with these full fat VNFs, because so much of this development burden was put onto the operators. So if this whole cycle now in some, some way complete with this project, we can actually gain, this, gain the leverage of these unikernels in modern networks, which is just something we, we didn't really have the capability to do with traditional infrastructure. So kind of moving on to kind of a generic summary of everything, we've shown, shown what unikernels can provide detailed application specific metrics and operator metrics for performance. And we can see what we can extract those with kind of approaches such as where Unimon shows it. And beyond just monitoring themselves, they can quite capably monitor generic network services based around hardware, potentially software network functions such as a bit like P4 based or OpenFlow based network functions and other unikernel functions as well. And this can be targeted at specific parts of a network so we don't have to burden the entire infrastructure for the, for the gain of one metric. And as I said, this does happen to bring developers and operators vastly closer together.